Next Fest is coming to LA in August, and we're excited to screen some of Sundance's coolest movies, including the darkly absurd comedy Limit. Writer-director Janixa Bravo and co-writer and star Brett Gelman came by to talk about what inspired the movie. From character, to look, to editing, and more, these are the top 10 influences on the film Limit. Lemon is a dark, absurd comedy. It is the story of a man who is left by his girlfriend of 10 years who watches his life unravel after she leaves him. You basically watch me fail for 90 minutes. Um, number 10, Dysfunction. Elevator to the Gallows by uh, Louis Mal, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. It's 1958, it's black and white, it's beautiful. It stars Jean Moreau. This couple does something very bad and a lot of horrible things kind of happen. But the score of the piece, which is done by Miles Davis, is sensational. The score ends up being this highly dysfunctional, highly aggressive, sometimes hostile piece that is kind of in between the two characters. Yeah, I'd also say at that time a score like Miles Davis was not used in that type of film. There is that element to Lemon that you wouldn't normally see a score like this for this type of film. And the score in Lemon is very much this, this sort of character without a voice, but it's also the story of space, it's also the story of where we're going, where we'd like to be, to sort of paint what the, what the writing isn't doing or the directing isn't doing. Technically you could watch it with your eyes closed and you should still feel where we are. That's one of like the strongest markings of Elevator to the Gallows for me. The character that most influenced Isaac was really Buster Keaton. Isaac has a very vaudevillian quality about him. You know, he's always in the same uniform throughout the whole film, and there is this classical symmetry to the way that he moves in a very expressionless face that a lot of expression came from. Even though he's not doing anything physically, he's screaming from inside through his eyes. So there's a deadpan quality to Isaac and that's very influenced by Buster Keaton. And those guys knew how to get a lot out of very simple economic actions. Our film has a really strong ensemble, and an ensemble that sung to both of us is uh, in King of Comedy, Robert De Niro, Sandra Bernhardt, and oh my god, I just forgot. The Jerry third person. Lewis. Oh my god, yeah, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> totally lost his face. Um, the combination of those three, like those personalities don't necessarily make sense in like a Martin Scorsese movie, like together, but there's so much harmony in what is wrong with them. And with Lemon, as far as like the casting of our piece, there are a lot of comedians in the movie, or a lot of people who are known for being comedians or comedic actors. And to play things, not seriously I would say, but to play them without playing the jokes. It's like the jokes are in the writing, they're there or they're not there, and let's just play emotional intention, let's play trajectory. And that was really fun too, because I think it's some, there's something great about you go into the movie with a certain perception. You're like, I already know this guy, I know what this guy's gonna do, and then he does something else. You don't usually see Michael Sarah as an arrogant ass. But he's so good at being shitty. I know. He should play it all the time. Yeah, he should be more shitty more. The look of the film, uh, it's Minnie and Moskowitz, which is directed by John Cassavetes. It is one of his best films. Don't know why it's not talked about more. I really wanted to watch things that had been shot in LA that didn't necessarily feel like particularly LA movies. And we landed on Minnie and Moskowitz because it was pretty central LA. There was just kind of a texture about a Los Angeles without palm trees, but that still felt like this city. And in terms of like building our ensemble and building our world, like aesthetically it spoke to me the most. It was a little bit strange, it's a little bit funny, it's uncomfortable. There's like a theatricality about that but it feels effortless. We thought of a film that was a big influence on Lemon that is in a genre that is not a comedy is a film called <laughs> The Piano Teacher which stars Isabelle Huppert directed by Michael Haneke. I mean definitely how you feel uncomfortable 
when you watch his film and how uncompromising he is and what he wants the moment to be is a huge influence on Lemon. And I, I, I would say that things get so dark at times that they are humorous in a way. Her character is really, in a lot of ways, uh, similar to Isaac. There's a lot of uh, very direct, simplistic, economical action that she engages in. But she's tortured in. and unraveling from the moment you meet her. Exactly, just like Isaac. I would say though that while she may be hard to root for, you also get her relationship with her mother and you see this kind of like inherited trauma which explains why she is who she is and in Lemon while it may be hard to root for Isaac I mean it wasn't for us but there's a section of the film that you spend with his family and you see the environment that he grew up in which is one in which he disappears one in which he is not visible one in which he doesn't feel heard and that is supposed to be a kind of signal for the audience of like well this is how we got here Editing that influenced Lemon, I would say Hal Ashby is the landlord. It's his first feature. It's fantastic. It stars Bo Bridges. It's this comedy about gentrification in Brooklyn in the late 70s. It's edited so, so beautifully. It's really, I'm gonna use the word effortless again. That's gonna be my word of the day. I particularly remember the scene where Bo Bridges' character, he meets this woman. In the middle of the conversation, they're now on the street. And then in the middle of that conversation, they're in the diner. And it's the same conversation the whole time. It's like this five minute exchange and the location just keeps changing right in the middle of the scene. And it's like so magical. And it, it has the sort of like rush and the emotion of when you meet someone and you have feelings for them and how time moves and space moves and yet it's still this one conversation. There are scenes where you're in the film and then you're in this void. Bo Bridges is in this void where he kind of speaks to camera and it just is pretty seamless. We have it on DVD and we like rewound it. We were yeah. like, wait a minute, did that just happen? And you didn't question it. <laughs> it was so seamless you, you could almost just not notice it. An indie movie that influenced Lemon would be uh, Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle. It's surreal, it's fantastical, it's theatrical, it's about the business, like an actor's journey in trying to become himself, become a performer. It really deals with what it means to be a success, what it means to be a failure, the fear of failure, and that's uh, those are huge themes. But for me, Hollywood Shuffle, it, it feels more like a per like a personal journey. You like deserve a spot, that you deserve a seat at the table, and so like the manifestation of that film, that film was made for $100,000 and he just fucking did it and it's brilliant. Like if a movie like that didn't exist, I don't know if there would be space for a film like Lemon and that that existed. For me it was like if the door's slightly open, I'm shoving myself in and saying I belong here. Absurdist comedy, I would say, Fassbender's Beware of a Holy Whore. It's actually a comment on the film he made right before, which was like a total f***ing nightmare. And it's like the drama of a film crew, like sexual tensions and bad vibes and people not paid enough. And this one hotel where there seems to be nothing, they're very much like on an island. But it's super absurd, so ridiculous, like it's making fun of like the nightmare that it is to make work, like how difficult it is. Like this is not like breezy. It wasn't like, hey, this was fun. I mean, it's tough. It's really, really tough. I think for both of us, like the movie was like a therapy and like, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be fine. <laughs> You'll get yeah. there. Also, I think a lot of people would watch it and find it very disturbing. It's super and stressful. Yeah, it's really stressful. I mean, a lot of the humor comes out of what brutality human beings are capable of and deep human flaws. And it's, yeah, it's like people being pushed really, really far and like right before they leap off the edge, they like physically assault. It's funny that Fassbender was facing the darkest recesses of himself as he wrote this film, uh, in which we also were doing in many ways. Our choice for dark comedy is not a film, it is a television show a television show by the name of Enlightened, in our minds is one of the best pieces of art ever made. Uh, it was created by Mike White. Genius. Total genius, best huge writer. hero of ours. It's like our favorite kind of protagonist. It is a character that ultimately means well, but that has 
almost no tools uh, to actually uh, exercise meaning well. Laura Dern's character in that is like this kind of woman, like strong-willed and completely unaware <laughs> of uh, how her choices are not only not welcome, but just really off. He does such an amazing job, of, especially through Laura Dern's character, of showing somebody being completely selfish in their selflessness. Such an amazing example of an artist who really lets the moment be the moment. If it's funny, great. If it's not, great. If it's disturbing, great. If it's sad, great. And that was definitely a way in which we approach our work. An audience has more of a chance of a really rich experience, especially right now with where we're at, by not not really being able to put your finger on what it is we're saying or what genre this film is supposed to uh, be. Mike White, obviously, from his work, yeah. really does too. You're not playing the humor, you're playing the feeling, and if you laugh, that's great, and if you don't, it's also okay. It's just like playing feelings. I would say the number one film, and I feel I also need to preface it by saying that the maker of this piece is debatable. I understand. The film itself, though, has made a massive impact on my life. Annie Hall, how that film treats New York or LA, how that film treats women, this kind of flailing male protagonist, and, and like the woman, Diane Keaton's character, soars while he uh, stays behind. Like that was something that was very sexy to us. And then just the humor of it, and it's also so beautiful, it's really stunning and effortless, word of the day. This was the biggest expression of him coming into his own and drawing comedy from dramatic situations. Bringing comedy out of a, a deep flaw that he had. And I would say too, that it's a very composed comedy. It's not improvisational. Everything is very deliberate. And that's what I would say about cool. your work in general, but also this film. Thank you, darling. Thank you for watching. Those are the 10 films that influenced Lemon. We will be playing August 11th as part of Sundance's Next Fest Festival. And we open August 18th. Uh, you can find us in theaters and on demand.